What is the petty thing you do to break the system that may or may not actually have any effect? Story 1. My place of work automatically shuts off our computers if they're left on after a certain time to save power. They only do this if you have left your computer on after a certain time. My second third week at my job, I forgot to shut it down before I left so they added me to the list and my computer shuts off automatically at 6pm every night. A month or two after I was added to the list, I had to stay after normal working hours to enter some information. Lo and behold, the damaged computer, the damned computer shuts off. The program I'm using doesn't have a save function, so I had to re-enter the data. It took me 30 freaking minutes to do the first time around. Next day, I ask if they could stop turning my computer off so I don't have to worry about it screwing me over again. Apparently, they can't because they're worried about me wasting company power. So now, every day, before I leave, I pull up the network cable. They can't turn off my computer if it's not on the network, so I freaking win. I've been doing this for two years now, and I'm sure that no one gives a rat's butt, but frick this system. Sounds like crappy sys admins. You can configure the computers to automatically suspend or shut down after a period of activity instead of forcefully shutting down PCs at a particular time. Now, is it really crappy sysadmin, or is it just lazy sysadmin? Which, okay, debatably, you could say that those are basically the same thing, but, I mean, lazy sysadmin just, you know, might be lazy because their job sucks, and that doesn't mean they're necessarily bad at it, they just don't want to do it. You know, like most of us. Story 2. I worked at a call center doing credit repair and people wanted to get homes with credit ratings under a 620, which uh, 640 is where most big banks will start working with you. Under that, they'll ream you or say, sorry, can't help. I used to get calls from clients saying they had minor bills preventing them from getting their home. Well, there is something most people don't know. If you ask these bill collectors to send you original paperwork of your alleged debt with your original signature, you'd be happy to pay, but these companies just pay for your contact info and know what you owe, so if they did try to get you the original paperwork, 9 times out of 10, it takes more than 30 days, and they have exactly 30 days to do so, or the debt is written off, so to speak. Doing so, I helped well over 30 families move from their crappy whole apartments to the home they wanted, all due to $40 medical bills holding their credit score down a few minor points. I could give a lot of advice to help with raising or maintaining your credit score. To be fair, credit scores just suck, and I say that was as someone who, after a lot of years of having a bad credit score, actually has a pretty decent one now, but oh my gosh, was it awful for the longest time because they let 18 year olds take out credit cards and stuff, and college loans. Do you have any idea what a bad idea that is? Especially 18 year old me? Oh god, it's all, it's all terrible, but folks, if you're younger, if you're gonna be an adult, Learn to play the credit score game, because it's a lot of hassle in your life if you don't. Story 3. I live in Toronto, and city parking here is done through a pay terminal that prints paper tickets. I was driving to work and paying $9 a day to park and having to line up for 5 minutes at the machine every morning while other people paid. I work as a graphic designer, so I saved a bunch of slits, scanned them in, and built a font out of the various numbers and letters on the ticket. I got a programmer friend to make a script that generates a ticket for whatever date entered. Now I print off a week's worth of tickets on the color laser at work, snip them on the paper cutter, and park all week for free. There is only one unique identifier on the ticket I can't forge, a number generated at the bottom of the ticket. I tuck that part under the black liner on the edge of the windshield. Voila, 200 bucks a month saved. That's improved by the fact that parking tickets in Toronto are often cheaper than parking legally in my experience. Story 4. Whenever I fill out a survey for some random service or product, question, what did you like best about the product or service? Answer, the donuts. Question, what did you like least about the product or service? Answer, the meetings. Question, do you have any additional comments? Answer, more donuts, less meetings. I'm dumb as frick and this makes me giggle endlessly. I work as data entry for a market research company and, thank you, it's fun to read that kind of thing. Story 5. In Canada, when we do our taxes, you have to make over $200 on your refund or the government won't send you a check. So if I'm supposed to get back $1.99, the government says, whoops, sorry, you don't get this because it's not worth our time. 
However, if I owe the government even a penny, they want it. So every year I end up owing about 11 cents, but I never pay them. I just wait until they send me the letter at that says they want the money, and I went right there. I made you spend more than 11 cents asking me for the 11 cents. Frick the man. This does not cost the government, it costs the taxpayers, meaning you and others like you. I mean, first off, yeah, I think the person commenting is right, you are just costing the taxpayers a small fraction of money. But also, for costing them a tiny amount of money that they aren't noticing at all, the minuscule amount of time you're wasting doing this is probably costing you more because I assume your time is worth something, uh, probably more than what this is worth, but eh, enough, it makes it happy, I guess it's worth it. Story 6. In high school, they got rid of the lockers, then made a no backpacks in the library rule. So we had to leave our bags with all our worldly possessions by the front door and walk back and forth if we needed stuff. Not a huge deal, but kinda lame. They told us it was to prevent theft of library books. So my friends and I began walking out with a book or two every day and collecting them in the trunk of one of our cars. When one friend walked out with the big dictionary that sits on a little pedestal, we figured we had done enough. We arrived at school early one morning and put all the books through the after hours drop box they barely fit, with a note explaining that we stole them all without a backpack. The roll was rescinded. Story 7. I work at a popular Italian food chain restaurant that hands out Andy's mints to their guests at the end of the meal. The way it's supposed to work is every guest at the table is supposed to get one mint because the cost of the mints is calculated into the cost of the meal to balance everything out. I regularly gave out handfuls of the dang things to my tables, especially if they have kids who are actually nice, or if I have regulars or friends sit at my table, I'll take a small to-go box and fill it with them and write lasagna on top so no one is the wiser. We get told to treat our guests like family, and my family eats a crap ton of Andy's candies. That's the best part about Olive Garden. There's a best part about Olive Garden? Story 8. I used to get all these customer surveys when I was in college. They were questionnaires about what stuff you bought in the household and how much and what you like to buy, etc. I started filling them out as if a large family of Polynesians lived there. I wrote about how much we wished we could get poi and stuff at Walmart. I would also get the ones my neighbors had and fill them out the same way. Lo and behold, one day I went into Walmart and there is now a Polynesian food section. This was in the middle of Tennessee, by the way. You better be eating that dang poi. Story 9. I saw something similar already mentioned, but after being email bombed slash call bombed slash mail bombed after asking for a car quote on mine, I found a way to wreak petty vengeance. Whenever a company asks for my info online for something I don't need, for example a car quote, I enter their own info back into them. I have no idea if someone catches this, but the thought of them wasting their resources harassing themselves is enough to make me feel better. They might catch their own information, but they certainly won't catch each other's. Okay, normally I wouldn't say that you should be, like, bothering these people and making their lives harder because it's just normal people working for a lot of these things. But for these, like, companies that call you after you ask for a quote for a car loan or something like that, no, no, they're all monsters. I'm sorry, it's, it's terrible, but I've done this once in my life and the calls are awful. And the people were not nice about things, so I think I support this. Story 10. I work in a huge mall in the suburbs. They have started charging for parking. If you spend over $150, you get to park for free. The fee is not a lot, $3 a day for staff, but that crap adds up. And they're making money off all the poor retail assistants who are going through university or don't really have a lot. Not to mention that it's like three blocks away from anywhere, so every time I work, I go and validate parking for people. If any of the staff want me to, I'll put through the $150 and they can go and validate it, and then I'll return the items. Frick you, Westfield. Story 11. The sandwich franchise I work for is owned by a colossal and successful D-head. We had some of the highest turnaround rates because the company does not care about keeping employees and would prefer you quit without notice to giving you a raise. I like to get sloppy with how much bacon should be on a sandwich, how much avocado spread, give free crap out all the time, and generally do everything I can to make them lose money. 
It's possible you're making him money by increasing customer satisfaction. Story 12. I was working at the London Olympics this summer, employed as a cameraman, and we were told that because Adidas was sponsoring the event, it was frowned upon to wear, say, Nike's shoes, but they didn't provide us with a free pair of Adidas shoes. Lo and behold, on my first day there, I bought a nice pair of Nike free with the most neon logo printed on the side I could find. Because they frick the system. Nobody said anything, though, and I still refuse to wear Adidas just because. I mean, to be fair, if there's literally anyone working the Olympics that they shouldn't care what they're wearing, it's the camera people, because you're the one group of people who really isn't on camera. <laughs> I think guess some camera people might catch other camera people briefly and stuff, but, like, you're the one people that don't want to be on camera, you're controlling them, what do they care what you wear? Story 13. I like to rent a movie from Redbox the night before I'm about to fly somewhere, then return it to a Redbox 1,000 miles away. Typically, I will do the same thing at my destination, too, and try to pick the most disparate genres ever. So I'll rent some gruesome horror flicks and return Dora the Explorer. We should coordinate to empty a Redbox of movies and fill it all with a single movie. Story 14. I received a bill in the mail for two cents with a prepaid return envelope. I taped a nickel to the invoice and mailed it back in their envelope. They then had to send me a check in the mail for three cents because I overpaid. It cost them $1.35 in postage alone just to collect my two cents, not to mention the additional costs they incurred. Oh, and I never cast the check so it's still on their books. Next time, write it off, buttholes. Story 15. When I worked at a regional fast food chain, Sonic, for you Tornado Alley folk, I would always give the customer five cheddar peppers instead of four, because that crap is dank, son. Bless you, Lord, bless you. Those things are like small, spicy, crack-filled tubes of pure love, but crap on their ice cream. Source, I'm barn-sized. Okay. I've only been to Sonic like twice in my entire life, and I've never had cheddar peppers, but I assume that they're basically jalapeno poppers. And, sir or madam, if you're giving out one free jalapeno popper when people order those things, you are a saint. You're a wonderful, good human being, because if I had ordered a four-pack of jalapeno poppers, and I got through my four and then looked in the bag, and there was another one waiting there, I might actually cry. Story 16. This is super lame. When I did my taxes for the first time a few years ago, I was really excited to get my $12.15 back. But I got a check in the mail for only $12. My dad told me they just round up or down, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, next time I was at the post office, I walked off with the pen. Pens are cheaper than that in bulk. You have to go back. Story 17. We have speed cameras that take your picture and mail you a ticket. I registered my car to my business, sped through the zone while giving the camera the finger. You can't ticket a company. Every few times I get a copy of the pick in the mail with an affidavit asking me to identify the employee. I then write, who is this, and post the pick in my office. I work out of my house alone. I have six of these. Story 18. My stepdad is a lazy butthole who ruined my childhood. He's also a bit of a germaphobe. When I was still living with him during dinner time sometimes, he would ask me to get him a fork or a spoon or whatever, and while I was in the kitchen, I would lick it before giving it to him. I would lick it and then watch him use it. Take that, butthole. Story 19. When I was younger, I religiously used to write for sensual massage in the notes area of checks to the IRS. I am 34 years old and every check that I've written in my life has said sensual massage in the memo. Every check, no exceptions. Now, this would be really fun, useful information for a little will prank thing to do if it were, you know, the 90s and people still wrote checks. I understand some of you still write checks for some stuff and that's fine, I guess. It must be really interesting with the denim jackets that you're wearing and the slap bracelets. Actually, that does sound cool. <sighs> Story 20. I used to own my own small cleaning company, and once I cleaned an office for a solid month and they refused to pay me. So, I went in with a dozen eggs and broke them at various points in their ventilation system. This isn't petty. It's well-deserved. Story 21. 
I stick a single sheet of blue paper into the feed tray for the office fax machine so every once in a while a page will come out blue. Some of the faxes we get are important documents which are archived for years. Someday an auditor is going to go through them all and see random blue pages and wonder what it means. Story 22. Bring my own food into movie theaters. I've seen a woman pull five large styrofoam cups and a bucket of KFC out of her purse to feed herself and her kids during Iron Man. She even put gravy on their potatoes. I was so envious. Story 23. Self-checkout at the grocery store. I tell the machine I'm buying avocados, but I'm actually buying organic avocados. All produce suddenly became bananas at the self-checkout stand when I was making 12k a year. Story 24. Whenever I have to drive in New Jersey, I avoid all toll roads. The only time they get me is at river crossings. Ever notice how all of them charge you for getting out of New Jersey and not getting into it? I still get back into Pennsylvania for free over 95. I don't hate Jersey or anything, but frick tolls. Yeah, I'm sorry, there are, there are a number of different ways that, like, states collect taxes from you that are supposed to go to fixing the roads, and then they're like, well, there are toll, toll roads and everything to get money to keep the roads. Ba Just take the money elsewhere. Stop doing it. Stop. I, need, I pay you for my car's registration, and I pay I, uh, some kind of tax that goes to the state, and, I don't know, you uh, tax my non-groceries or that you, you, you have enough. Stop it. Story 25. For me, I refuse to choose between an ad when they give you the choice between the two at the beginning of a show on Hulu. Pretty pointless, but I do it anyway. But that's like 15 extra seconds that could be avoided if you just clicked one randomly. Story 26. For my job, I am required to write daily reports. As such, I have taken to writing dates and numbers in long, antiquated forms, such as on this day, the 10th of the 4th month of the 2013th year of our Lord, any numbers are written as Roman numerals. Story 27. I mark every suggested article Facebook gives me as spam. They pay no attention. I keep getting the suggested articles, but it makes me feel better inside in my own petty little way. I always enjoyed marking them as offensive material. Story 28. When I worked in a retail store or electronics department, I would always hand people the cheapest, most generic cell phone chargers and HDMI cables, and I'd explain why the $10 cables were just as good as the $100 cables. You know you joke, but eventually, eventually you keep writing in stuff like Optimus Prime, and he's gonna take office, and then you get a big giant robot trying to lumber his way into the Senate, and he's just like, Congress, congressmen, roll out, and Mitch McConnell's just gonna... Um, um, <sighs> that's already a dated joke, but I don't know. That's all I got. Story 29. I write myself in for a lot of elections, especially when I couldn't name any candidates. I read in Optimus Prime for any office where I don't recognize the candidate's name or where there's only one candidate running. Story 30. Whenever I gave slideshow presentations, I hid a penis in there somewhere. Busted by classmates, but teacher never called me out on it. I was hoping you were a teacher. Story 31. I say thank you over and over again at Chick-fil-A just because I know they have to respond with my pleasure. My record is eight my pleasures. Story 32. Whenever I'm watching anything on Hulu, I click not relevant on any advertisement. Hopefully one day they will run out of things to show me and I will be able to watch shows commercial free. Story 33. I always say good morning to my environmental teacher in the afternoon. Every time someone says enjoy your meal, I say you too. It makes me happy for some reason. The... The level that you're at... We're saying good morning to someone when it's the afternoon and... And that's a thing that gives you... Any amount of thrill to do. I don't know if I'm envious of how easily you find joy in this world. Or if I'm concerned. <laughs> Story 34. I always opt out at the airport. I do that as well. You should try not breaking eye contact with your groper and give a little moan. Story 35. I always take my shots at work. Feels good to get paid to crap. I used to like to calculate the moment where I got paid more than my lunch cost me. The Scantron document of our standardized tests has a huge page that says do not write here and for the last three years of testing, I've written anarchy in really tiny letters. Story 36. I always fill up gas to an exact amount, then add one cents. Then I walk in and pay cash and the person never seems to ask for it. I'm sure I've saved at least a dozen cents. 
Story 37. I throw hand sanitizer on the walls of the hospital I work in when I'm frustrated. I'm probably making it cleaner there, but it feels like vandalism and that's what's important. Story 38. Sometimes there are traffic monitors that gather data about how fast cars are going. I slow the frick down when I drive over them to screw with their data. Story 39. I'm a school principal. For the last 15 years, I've signed every piece of paper that I know will not be read as M. Mouse. Frick the bureaucracy. Story 40. I'm still grandfathered into unlimited 3G data from Verizon. I keep streaming music by a 3G as long as possible just to use up more data. <laughs> you think that's good? I've got a whole collection of floppy disks with 30, 40, some of them even 50 free hours of AOL for a month. I got so many of these things saved up and everything, I just connect my old phone line, get the old 14.4 K-Bot modem fired up, and I've got free internet for life, baby! <laughs> Story 41 at my university, they make us pay 10 cents for a water cup, so I put Sprite in it every time and it looks like water. My life is pathetic. Story 42. I take my electronics to work and charge them all. Phone, iPad, laptop. If it charges, it's coming to work with me. Story 43. Whenever I receive an email that tells me not to reply because it's an automated message, I reply with, okay. Story 44. I read broadcast NFL games without the express written consent of the NFL. Story 45. I flagged every ad on Facebook as offensive. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.